I'm here with uh, Donald Sly Green as we continue our conversation uh, about his story. And we're talking about uh, the trial and how the trial uh, began to take shape. Um, Sly, this was said to be the biggest case in Western New York history. Do you feel that you you were just being tried in the media, that there was just too much hype for you to win or get a proper defense? I feel that not only was it too much hype, but that the government influenced the witnesses to lie. The witnesses was willing to say and do anything in order to get themselves off. There was co-defenders on the case. Some of them I had never seen or met before. And the government are threat to take your kids away from you. Uh, the government will tell you what to say, tell you how to say it, you know practice it with you so that you'll be able to say it in a way to convince the jury that you're telling the truth. It may have been the biggest trial in the history of the city or in the Western District of New York to them, but it was the biggest hype to me mm. because the things that went on in that trial was unbelievable. Mm. And the government, they'll do anything, Pat, to win a case. Mm -hmm. I don't care what it is. They'll threaten to take your kids away from you. They'll threaten to put you in jail for long periods of time, you know, like the government, they sent word to one of the lawyers to inform me that, well, inform uh, Mr. Green that if he come over on our side, we'll make him a star. I said, I don't want to be a star in the way that you're talking about making me a star. I have no intentions on testifying against anybody to get myself out of anything or making life harder for somebody else just because I want to get out of the situation that I'm unfortunately in at the time that I was in it. I said, I'm going to trial. And I told the lawyers on the case, I don't want the lawyers to bring me that type of information, again, from the U.S. attorneys telling me that they could do this. I didn't want to hear it, mm. you know. So I proceeded right to trial. Mm. In other words, no matter how big the trial was, no matter what was going to happen, I was going to stand up to the very end. Mm. And I was not going to sacrifice anybody or put anybody under the bus or lie and fabricate anything against anybody. I was not going to do that on the state case when I went to trial. And I definitely was not going to do that on the federal case when I went to trial because that's not how I was raised in the streets, you know. So now, let, let, how, let me ask you this. Um, while all of this was going on around you, how were you feeling knowing what you were up against what what were your thoughts i mean wh okay what well, were you thinking in, in regards to yourself but i know most importantly your family what, what were you thinking okay well i had i had just got 25 to life for the uh state of new york now I, as i'm going through the trial and i get convicted i'm thinking like well, yo, I got, I just got convicted. They getting ready to sentence me. They sentenced me to four life terms and 110 years. That's five life terms and 135 years running wild, running crazy. And what's running through my mind is that I'm saying to myself that it's over with for me. You know, I might as well commit suicide or something like that. This is what I'm saying to myself, but I know I'm not going to commit suicide. I know I'm just going to stand up learn much as I can about the law, try to learn much as I can about the law to try to get my, myself out of the situation. At the time, I got two little boys and a daughter. And, you know, I'm thinking like, damn, I can't be there for them now. You know? Now, I could have put myself in a situation where if I wanted to lie and fabricate like the witnesses done against me to be with them, but I just couldn't see myself doing that, Pat. You know, their mothers was just going to have to raise them, and I was just going to have to see them in a way that I don't seen them over the years. You know, if I had to try to become a rat or a snitch or something like that, that I was not going to become. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's running through my mind like I got these three little babies, and, man, it's hurting, it's killing me, man. But I know I got to stand to the end, man. I got to stand up, mm -hmm. you know, and their mothers... You know, they're looking at me. They're not telling me to roll over or do this or do that because I'm not going to do it anyway. Then I got my mother. My mother is worrying. My family is worrying. You know, my brothers and all of them. You know, but my main objective, Pat, I got to be honest with you, man. My main objective is I'm going all the way through. I'm not copping out. 
I'm not asking for mercy or none of that. I'm just going to stand up all the way through the whole thing. And now those are the type of things that's running through my mind. And another thing that's running through my mind is that I'll never, ever see the streets again. Mm. Another thing that's running through my mind is that I'm all in. They don't took me down with lies. They don't took me down with, you know, with, with paid testimony. You know, they lining up to testify, to get themselves off a situation. But I know I'm up against all this, Pat, and I see all this, but I'm still going to stand to the very end mm. because that's how I was bred from the streets, man. That's how I came up. I'm standing up to the end. Now, somebody will say that, mm -hmm. yo, this guy's crazy. This guy's a fool. To them, I may be that. But to me, I was being the man that I am because right. that's just how I was raised in life, man, to stand up on my own and don't blame nothing on nobody else. Don't take my burden, my situation, and put it on somebody else. Mm. That's how I was. That's how I seen it, Pat. All right, uh, Sly. How many co-defendants were there in total? I had uh, thirty-two co-defendants on the case, mm -hmm. and nine of them testified. Nine out of thirty-two, nine testified, and uh, some of them went. In, like I said, some of them went into the Federal Witness Protection Program. But the whole thing of the case was to take me down. They didn't mm -hmm. care how they took me down, Pat. They didn't care whether they lied. They didn't care what they had to do. This is the federal government. They'll take, they'll arrest your grandmother. They'll arrest your mother. They'll arrest your sisters and brothers. They'll take the babies and put them in foster care. If they want you bad enough, they'll do anything within their power to take you down. They don't care if you're innocent or not, Pat. That's what they do. This mm -hmm. is the federal government, man. Mm -hmm. And this is what they've done to me. They've done any and everything they can to take me down. They didn't care if I was innocent of most of those charges or not. We're taking this guy, Sly Green, down. Mm. And that's what they've done, man. Mm. And, and I'm saying to myself, you take me down, I'm standing up to the very end. Mm. And that's how, I had, that's how I seen it, Pat. Mm. Sly, let me, a, let me ask you this. Uh, you told me you're, you're writing a book. Uh, yes. What is the goal of your book, and uh, when do we look to see uh, when it comes out? The book should be out uh, this year, probably around September or October of this year, and the name of the book is called Diaries of a Jailhouse Lawyer, Volume 1. There's a Volume 1, there's a Volume 2, and there's a Volume 3. And the book is based on me coming into the federal to state prison system with five life terms and 135 years and not sitting around in the prisons watching TV, not sitting around in the, not sitting around in the prisons playing basketball or playing cars, but coming into the system, going straight to the law library and trying to untangle this five life terms and 135 years. And inside the book, it tells the younger guys and the youths, you don't want to be like Sly Green. Because Sly Green was serving five life terms in 135 years. So you don't want to grow up admiring, emulating, being like this guy that they talk about, Sly Green. Because Sly Green don't want to be the type of guy that they labeled him as being. And Sly Green is not that type of guy that they labeled him as being. And Sly Green is not trying to be in prison for five life terms in 135 years. So for all the younger guys, the book tells you when you, co when you go to trial, you stand up at trial. When you come to federal or state prisons, now you got to stand up against inmates. Okay, you stood up in the public, now you got to come here and stand up. Now you got to fight your way through these guys. Now you got to show these guys that you're not soft. Now you got to go through a whole different type of initiation in order for you to survive in these type of prisons. So you don't want to be like Sly Green because if you be like Sly Green, then the feds in the state will do the same thing to you that they've done to Sly Green. Mm. So the best thing I would say for the youth in the book, as I say, is that, you know, turn the page to a different life. Mm -hmm. You know, go to school, educate yourself, do something constructive for yourself. And if you can stay out the streets, stay out the streets. But don't come up trying to emulate a guy like Sly Green because that guy is dead and gone. Mm. You know, you don't want to be like Sly Green. Now, if I had it to do all over again, I would go to law school and become a lawyer. Right. Even though I have, I have two degrees now. Mm -hmm. 
But I would go to law school and become a lawyer because when I came in here, I went straight to the law library. Now I know the law. Now I know how to write the law. I know how to dictate the law. I know how to do motions. I know how to file all kind of things. I know how to help people get out of jail. So mm. I've grown from being in this here type of prison environment. I've grown from this prison experience. And I'm, a, I'm in here around judges. Uh, they got a judge every here and there come to prison. Uh, they got lawyers come to prison. They got doctors come to prison. They got murders. They got crime bosses. They got kingpins that come to prison. And they got some guys that commit certain type of crimes that if they commit rapes or they uh, hurt old people or something, they can't come in these prison populations because they're not accepted. Right. You know, but my point is you don't want to be like Sly Green. That's for the public. Don't try to be like Sly Green, because if you try to be like Sly Green, then you're going to end up in the same situation that Sly Green is in, and you're going to be fighting for the rest of your life for your freedom, and you may die in prison, just like Sly Green may die in prison, if he don't get this last life off of him. If mm. Sly Green don't get this last life off of him, he'll die in prison trying to get out of prison. Mm. And that's what the book is about. The book is about all the cases, a lot of the cases that I won, about the experiences that I went through in uh, high security Colorado, which is Florence, Colorado. Mm -hmm. The experiences that I went through in Lewisburg, United States Penitentiary, Atlanta, Federal Penitentiary, Leavenworth, Federal United States Penitentiary. And when I say they was penitentiaries, Pat, I mean exactly that. When I, when I came to uh, Leavenworth, it looked just like the White House. It looked so dangerous and vicious. I was scared to death, man. Mm. I said, damn, what have I got myself into when I seen this penitentiary? Because I had never seen a penitentiary like this. And then when I got inside the penitentiary, it looked like the morgue, like some people done died in the basement of the penitentiary. And so I'm even more afraid. I'm shivering now. Mm. And I'm like, damn, what is this? Then when I get upstairs and I get into the areas, they got 80 cells long. The cells is 80 cells long. You can't even see at the end of the cells. Mm. So I'm like, damn. And then all of a sudden when I go to the mess hall, the mess hall is so big, it looks like the United Nations. You got Indians there. You got blacks there. You got whites there. You got Mexicans there. You got all the different gangs throughout the United States in this one penitentiary. You got like 34 different gangs there. You got crime bosses there. You got gangsters. You got killers. You got murderers. You got a whole lot of Sly Greens in there. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So don't look at Sly Green like he's some tough guy or he was some crime boss. That's not the case. Because I was none of that, and they got somebody for Sly Green as well, right in them prisons, along with Sly Green. Mm -hmm. You know, they got many Sly Greens in them prisons that's never coming out of them prisons. Have any of the, these groups tried to recruit you based on the hyped reputation of Sly yeah, Green? Yeah, you know, yeah, they talk to me and stuff like that, but I don't pay them no attention when it comes to that. A lot of them done said things to me, and, you know, I could have been a... Uh, you know, a shot caller, or OG shot caller, triple OG, because that's what they're using all that. But I don't get involved in things like that, Pat. Every day that I've been in prison, I've been in that law library. I go outside, I do two hours of physical workout, I come back and I spend the rest of my time in the law library. Whenever the prison get locked down for any type of disciplinary actions, I go straight to the law books in my cell. My whole objective is to one day be free. As you well know, uh, just from the hype that you experience on how they tried to build a personality around you, that same personality is was being permeated before you left in the hip hop world of of this gangster type image that a lot of our young people are beginning to follow that type of image in the street. What what would be your message to them? outside of uh, continuing on what you've already said? My message would be to them is don't go for the hype. Don't get involved with situations that might cause you to become incarcerated, especially in prison, because that's all it is, is hype. Uh, don't try to be like Sly Green. Don't, uh, don't make songs and lyrics and everything about Sly Green because... That guy is only an image that the federal government built up in order for them to win a trial. That's not me. The image that they built up as Sly Green being a gangster type of guy, a boss, crime boss, 
That guy's not that guy's not me. Mm. Sly Green is a guy that's in prison right now, suffering every day, trying to get himself out of prison. Sly Green is a guy that's looking towards the future for a better life if he can ever get out of prison. I don't see myself as being the type of guy that they should make lyrics about. I don't see myself as being the type of guy that's a, a, a gangster or anything like that because I'm none of that. It's just the image that the government built up. It's a fake image. It's an image that they portrayed. It's an image that they projected upon me in order to win a trial. Mm. And the things that's been said about me as being, you know, this this this, this crime boss, this gangster, this this real fly and serious guy, that's not me. I just want to be very honest with you. That's not me. That's just something that was built up by the government to take me down. And no matter who you are, if the government come for you and they want to take you down, they don't care. They're going to take you down by any means necessary. Mm -hmm. Like I said, they don't care if they got to get your mother, your grandmother, if they got to take your kids from you. If they got to charge you with being a super kingpin, a racketeering boss, if they got to charge you with criminal enterprise, if they got to give you four conspiracies and one conspiracy and make you look bigger than life, like they done made Sly Green look bigger than life. But see, I'm not impressed with the hype. And I ask that the young kids not be impressed with the hype. I ask that the young kids not try to idolize me or emulate me because that's not me. The image that was built up about me. That's not me. That's just something that was built up in order for the government to win a trial. I'm not that type of guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a guy in the law library every day trying to get my freedom. I'm a guy that's doing a life sentence and may die in prison all because of an image, all because of something that's been built up, all because of something that's been fantasized about me. And I'm saying this to you, Pat. Because this is what's in the book as well, and I'm trying to tear that image down that the government done built up about me, mm -hmm. that the public got about me, this, the uh, the monster they done created me into. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm 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 just not that guy. Yeah. You know, I got I got two degrees. I, I work out every day. I do exercise every day. And one more thing for young guys, when you come to these prisons, they need to remember that when they come to these prisons, for an example. In the federal penitentiaries that I'm in, when you come to these federal penitentiaries like Lewisburg, like Leavenworth, like High Security, Colorado, you come into these federal prisons with guys from all over the world, not just from the United States, guys from all over the world. You got some of the most dangerous, vicious guys in these prisons, and all they do is self-destruct. All they do is kill, murder, stab, rape, sexually abuse each other, disrespect each other. They're not trying to... Uh, educate themselves. Some of them are, about 10% of them, or 100%, 10% of them will try to educate themselves and strive to better their position in life so that upon a re-entry back into society, they have some type of skills and, you know, they want to do something positive with their life. But the average one is just talking about more crime, how to be a more of a successful criminal. And that's not what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and and when you come to these prisons, there's always the possibility that you may never make it out because a lot of guys get stabbed. A lot of guys get murdered. A lot of guys get raped. A lot of guys get killed. Certain guys can't make it in these prisons. The environments that you're being subjected to is subhuman environments. You're being controlled through the conditions of how they feel that they want to control it in these prisons. So when you think about Sly Green, you need to think about, do I want to spend the rest of my life in prison? Mm. Do I want to uh, have to go to the law library every day and try to knock down five life terms in 135 years with the possibility that I may never, ever be free again? When you think about Sly Green and these guys making these rap songs, talking about Sly Green, which some of them I have heard, that's not me. I'm not that type of guy. I'm not no gangster. I'm not no crime boss. I'm just a guy... They got caught up in a very unfortunate situation. And the situation got blowed up and got blowed out of hand. It's out of control. And now they done made me into this uh, this legendary figure on the streets. And I'm none of that. Mm -hmm. And I want the public to know that. I want the young guys that's going to school. I want y'all to know. That slide green image is a fake. That's a fraud. 
That's something that the government built up to make me into. Mm -hmm. I'm not that. I'm not going to try to live up to it. Mm -hmm. And and if I had it my way right now, I would be out there talking to the youth, trying to explain to the guys in the little boys club or explain it to anybody that would listen to me that, listen, man, I'm not about selling drugs. Some I have sold, but I've redeemed myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm not mm -hmm. about order no hits or kidnappers, extortion, or being a crime boss or something like that. I'm not into that. I was never into that in the beginning. It's been blowed up to be something that it never was. And I'm not going to stay in prison. And when people come see me, yo, that's such and such. That's not, No, I'm not living up to that image. Anybody that's been in these prisons will tell you that I'm not that type of guy. I'm a gentleman. I'm respectful. You know, I'm not a murderer. I'm not a killer. I'm not this, this, this bigger-than-life figure. That's just something that the government used to create an image to take me down. Mm -hmm. And I ask that the public look at me as being the gentleman that I am. And that's what the book is about. Mm -hmm. The book is about that. And they, those young, Pat, those young guys need to know, man, that when you come to these prisons, all they're doing is stabbing, murder, and killing each other. Because all the vicious and dangerous guys is being piled into the high security prisons. Mm -hmm. I don't went through it. I know. You got... 34, 35 different gangs in one prison. They're having gang wars. they murdering. They're killing each other. Mm -hmm. They're disrespecting each other. You know? Mm -hmm. They ain't talking about, yo, I'm going to try to get a better education so that if I ever re-enter into society, I'll be able to do something positive and constructive with my life. What are your degrees in, Sly? I got two degrees. I got one in business and the other one in business administration. I got two of them. Mm -hmm. And everything that I'm saying, Pat, is in transcripts. And news this call is from a federal prison. And all the 166 cases in the five Supreme Court cases that I want, all they got to do is click on most of the U.S. district courts in the United States. I don't have a case damn near in every circuit in the United States, mm -hmm. you know, and in district courts. So if anybody don't believe that I want 166 cases in five Supreme Court cases, all they got to do is plug into the court, put Donald G. Green, and put 39747019, and they'll see that I don't want 166 cases and five Supreme Court cases. Those guys didn't used to like you to put their name on the cases, but a few years ago I started putting my name on my cases because I've been winning so many. And it's like a gift. I need to say this to you too, Pat. Mm -hmm. One day I had to get a feeling in my tooth. Uh huh. And so my tooth was, the guy, the dentist filled my tooth, but my tooth got poisoned. Poison came into my bloodstream. So I hit the floor. When I hit the floor, I went out. And so I'm walking, and I got people on this side and people on the other side because I'm walking this long, bright light. And an angel comes out of nowhere, and I can't describe how the angel looked. All I know is it was like a voice I never heard before, and it was a presence there. And as I'm walking in the straight line towards the light, it's a big, bright light at the end. And I got people hollering and screaming at me, and they below me, and they in dark, but I'm walking on this on this bright line, and they hollering and screaming about me about everything I ever done in life. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And I'm, I'm afraid to look down, because if I look down, they're going to pull me down. Mm -hmm. So an uh, angel come out of nowhere and say, don't pay no attention. Just keep walking right. and keep looking straight ahead towards the light. So I keep looking straight ahead towards the light. I keep walking with the angel. Another angel come around that angel and come over to the right side. And the other angel, like, it hurry off like it was running off or something. And this angel said to me, we're not ready for you yet. Mm. We still have a lot left for you to do. So I know that I'm still in prison, and I know that this here is a near-death experience, and this ain't no dream or nothing like that. And so, the, so I go to walk, and I tell the angel, I said, no, I want to go. Because I know I'm in federal prison doing this life sentence, and I don't want to come back. So the angel said, no, we still have a lot left for you to do. So I go to step because I want to still go towards the light. And when I look down, it's like what they call that hellfire. I look, I step back, and I come back into the life that I'm in in the dentist's office, and I'm in all this pain and all this here stuff because my bloodstream and my face done blew up so big. It's a shame. So they rushed me to the hospital. And I ain't never forget that, man. So mm. what I'm saying to you is saying that I must have been given a gift to be able to win them cases like I'm winning them. Because I can't even believe that I be winning them like I win them. I just got so good at it. When the ones I take, I win them. Mm -hmm. I don't win every one of them, Pat. 
of the 166 in the five Supreme Courts, I only lost five cases since I've been doing law. Mm. You know, and I just feel that it's a gift. I just feel that God got better things for me to do. And that that story that I just told you is a true story. Mm -hmm. And I put that in the book, too. Awesome. You I know, like that. the angel said, we still have a lot left for you to do. We're not ready for you yet. Now, the other angel could have been the angel of death. That's right. I don't know. You know? That's right. That's, those are the type of things that I've been going through. This concludes the first part of the exclusive interview with Donald Sly Green here on a special edition of The Message. Donald Sly Green is taking an opportunity with us to tell his side of the story. Today, he talked about some major and key points, but don't miss next week. I am the Mighty Oba, Pat Freeman, here on a special edition of The Message. We'll